at the end of the day, it's all about freedom. But the reason why they wouldn't get on board with him is because he was too risky. He would say real shit, and that scares them. Every now and then, Austin Peterson would say some shit. You know, they'd be like, uh... They'd be like, um, you know, Austin, what do you think about the Second Amendment? And he would say, the Second Amendment does not exist so that we can hunt. The Second Amendment exists so we can shoot at our government when they become tyrants. Uh, you know, they don't really want to put that guy up there. Can you picture Gary Johnson saying that? No. Could you imagine those words coming out of Bill Weld's mouth? No. Of course not. Do you, for one second, think that's not the reason we have the Second Amendment? Of course it is. He's exactly right. But he will say that, and in fact he did say that at the Stossel debate. Look, you have you had the progressive era in, in the beginning of uh, the 20th century. Um, and, and within the teens, this, this, the seeds for statism were truly planted in our country. And I would say 1913, 1914 are the big years oh, yeah. where you have uh, the dual, Woodrow the two-headed, well, it's the, it's the two-headed uh, monster of statism, and both the heads were planted, and this would be the Federal Reserve and the income tax. This is what really lays the bit. Now, at the time, they were these little, uh, you know, kind of creatures that have grown into these monsters. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Judge Napolitano was mentioning this. Uh, this also came up when he said that Woodrow Wilson promised that the rate would never surpass 3%. And, you know, it's all, all this bullshit. But anyway, so, so the Fed is created. We go, we go into central banking, and we go into being an income tax country, right? Then... Shockingly, we're in a war a few years later, and this war lets the state, you know, so that now we get to the state gets to grow. So instead of the three percent thing that we'd never go over, now that rates shoot up and they never come back down to mm -hmm. to as lower rates as they were pre World War One. Um, after World War One, right? Of course, you have a uh, we have the. Roaring 20s leading into the crash in 29. Then you have a massive expansion of government, the biggest we've ever had at, at that point in our history, in what is known as the New Deal. The New Deal, then World War II, and then it's, it's really off to the races. Uh, at, at that point, after, uh, after World War II, you have really the, the military-industrial complex created as we know it. Then the Great Society... Uh, uh, the Great Society of the 60s comes later. So there's these different periods of time where you have massive expansions of government. Mm -hmm. We've now had one more that is unlike anything else. The last 15 years or so since 9-11, whether you look at the foreign policy, the domestic policy, the, the spending, a any level you want to go, the, the country, the, the growth of government is out of control. So I'm just saying when you're a libertarian who doesn't have all this stuff to risk and you're not... Uh, you know, you're not living in this ridiculous, isolated world where you have to keep everybody happy. You go, dude, we need to take a fucking shot at this. Forget putting up a candidate who doesn't risk anything. What are you talking about? We're losing everything. Right. So, so what do you mean risk? Let's take a risk. Let's go for it. Safe will guarantee the continued expansion of the state. So fuck safe. We want to go for it. That's why I was for Austin Peterson, not Gary Johnson. I want to go for it. Let's take a shot. Let's take a shot at cracking something open. And okay, no, probably we're not going to win the White House, but let's maybe convert another million people.